Welcome to Bar Chart's weekly series of webinars designed to help you, the trader investor, better understand a variety of trading concepts, along with the pages and tools Bar Chart provides to support you in making a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, bull put credit spreads. This commonly used option strategy allows bullish traders to profit from a rise in the price of an underlying security with limited risk and without the capital outlay of ownership. Hi, my name is uh, John Rowland, and uh, today I want to give you guys a basic understanding of this option credit spread strategy. I'm gonna show you some ways how to tweak our option screens and some shortcuts to help find these uptrending markets to take advantage of this option strategy and these opportunities. Uh, with me today is my partner and our moderator, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Hi, John. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. And how are you? I'm doing great. We've got a little bit of snow here in Chicago and uh, looks nice out there. <laughs> well, we haven't gotten snow here yet. It's been a little, it's been cold, but not uh, no snow yet. But uh, it's, it's it's definitely cooler than normal for this time of year, so yeah, I'm excited. Well, it might be coming your way, so hold <laughs> on there. <laughs> so, Gina, is it hard to believe that how fast we, that we've moved through um, all of these advanced uh, options strategies in our webinar series? Yeah, you have been trying to knock these off one by one, and I know today's topic in particular has been one that uh, some of our regulars have been really requesting you do. So you know, we're looking to get right into the topic and explore what you have to tell us today. Cool. I'm excited to get uh, that done as well, too. All right. Just uh, before we start, our disclaimer, remember that any trading of securities is a is risky and that and make sure that before you do uh, any trading at all, that you consult a financial advisor and that you understand uh, in light of your financial conditions, the ability to bear financial risk. Uh, remember that today's session, as always, is for educational purposes and that uh, it should not be uh, construed or and think about as endorsing a particular stock or option to trade uh, from our webinar today, okay? Um, so what is a, a bull put a credit spread or what is the definition of it? So what it is, it's a vertical uh, option spread where we're going to sell a put option, we're gonna call that leg one, and then we're gonna buy uh, another put, uh, leg two. And the strategy itself is designed for traders who have a bullish uh, sentiment. In other words, they believe that the stock price is going to go up, or as long as it doesn't go down, we could still profit from a market that uh, holds steady. Um, so since we're going to sell uh, the first leg and that leg is going to be closer to current price and then purchase a, uh, another put, which is going to be farther away from current price, this action is going to generate a credit. Our maximum profit will be limited to the amount of credit that we take in from these two different strikes. Now, in order for us to achieve that maximum profit, we need this price of the stock to ex be above um, the higher strike price at expiration. Our maximum risk is limited uh, to the difference between our two uh, strike prices minus the credit that we take in. So let me, uh, sh show you. Oh, I forgot again. I did it again. <laughs> forgot break even. Break even occurs uh, if the stock price is below the higher strike price, the one that we sold, um, by the amount of the credit that we receive. All right. So here we see a picture of Cisco and um, design this trade where we're going to short or sell the $45 put strike and receive a credit of $1.35. 
then we're going to purchase or go long the $43 put strike. And that's going to cost us 65 cents. So our maximum profit would be the amount of money that we take in, $1.35, minus the 65 cents that we put out as long as Cisco stays above $45. Now, our maximum loss is the difference between our two strike prices, $45 and $43, that $2, minus the credit that we took in, uh, $0.70. Cents. And so our maximum risk would be $1.30. Our break-even, if price starts to fall and we're coming towards the time of expiration, would be the $45 strike minus the 70 cents of net credit that we took in. So $45 minus 70 cents, our break even would be $44.30. As long as the stock uh, stays above $44.30 at the time of expiration, then we, in theory, could make some money, but we're not going to make as much as our maximum profit of 70 cents. We could make a little bit, a little bit of uh, money on this one. Now, before I move away from this screen, um, I do want to talk about this picture here, and we will get a chance to look at some other examples in our session today. But this is really kind of what we want to start achieving or when we start to set up our trades. What I want to employ onto you guys is that how we set our strikes, how we look at break even and how we pick that lower strike, we really want to kind of be in concert with our trend or with the structure of our market. Notice, for instance, here, this $45 strike that we're going to sell, that price has held that value several times. And so that is an area of support and why we want to sell that. We believe that price is going to hold above there and go higher. Where do we set our lower strike? Well, we want to be below where we believe our trend is broken or our trend is going down. Now, I could raise this price up a little bit, but you can see that there is relative support in this uptrend and around $43.50. So that's why we ended up picking that $43 strike. Now, we also kind of want to find where our break even has some support as well. And notice that our break even at $44.30 is right around an area where we see also some support in terms of price action. So that's what, what I want to employ on you guys is that when we start to design, design these trades, we want to kind of look for these structures that coincide with the strikes. Now we're going to do um, analysis on the strikes and the prices that we're going to get and the ra ratios, and we're going to try to co combine those two concepts. All right. So let's talk about the philosophy of the trade so traders who are mildly bullish or overly bullish right will achieve much greater profits if they pick that first strike it that is slightly in the money or really close to current price um and that maximum profit will only occur if at the time of expiration the stock price has gone higher it has to get above that that strike price that was in the money but this trader will take on greater risk because if the price does not get above that strike price or if it falls uh, then that straight trader could be at risk of something called early assignment in other words a person who has bought that put from us will exercise that put and then make us take ownership of this stock uh, those traders who are slightly bullish or believe, let's say, their stock is stuck in a range, uh, very, you know, it's in, in, let's say, a $10 range pattern, and it's now at the bottom and it's starting to turn uh, back up, uh, they will be better if they choose a strike that's a little bit uh, at or out of the money, just a little bit below uh, current price. Now, this strategy is a lot more conservative. Um, but we only need the stock price to stay above that uh, higher strike price in order for the trade to become profitable. But we're not going to make as much as those who are more bullish and take 
those trades that are in the money. Now, when we did our last uh, credit spread options seminar uh, session, uh, the bear call credit spreads, uh, we took the more conservative approach. But I believe that um, most traders understand what an uptrend looks like and um, recognize these uptrends and understand momentum, momentum theory. You know, sometimes you might heard the expression uh, "bulls take the stairs." You know, you can see a stock that is is continuing to move in an upward trend. And I think also timing-wise, this is a really relevant subject matter because of what is going on in the market right now. This is an event of what I call the Robin Hood revenge trades, where we see a lot of these stocks that have big momentums, um, where we could employ the employ this option strategy, and where I wouldn't feel comfortable. You know, for instance, like GameStop, I don't know if I'd be comfortable buying GameStop at three hundred dollars, but when one of these stocks starts taking off or the momentum starts to really pick up, this strategy is, is ideal for uh, those individual stocks, okay? Uh, time decay or theta. We don't really go deep into Greeks um, in our sessions, but theta is important to understand because in terms of our strategy here, it tells us how fast the value of the option is going to decay or that premium is going to evaporate. And since we're selling something, right, we want to uh, that selling that option to expire worthless. So uh, time decay is important for us. Um, so the passage of time is to our advantage. Every day as a day goes by, as long as price is above our strike, that strike price will start to fall, the, not the strike that we pick, but the premium price will start to fall. Um, and theta theory says that inside of 30 days, this decay starts to increase exponentially as we move towards our expiration. So therefore, what we want to try to achieve is we're going to look at credit spreads that are designed with shorter expirations. Uh, DTEs, days to exp expiration. Now, when we've done debit spreads in the past, what we want to do is we, we want more time. We want price to go in our favor. So we look for longer periods of time. But in the credit spreads, we're going to look at shorter time frames. All right, so there are some other uh, risks that you need to be aware of. And um, the first one is early assessment, or excuse me, assignment. And what happens here is if price starts to fall below the, that higher strike price put that we sell, and the person who has put bought that put price, the value that they paid or the price has fallen below where it makes it advantageous for them or profitable for them to exercise that put, then they would exercise the put, sell to us the stock. So we might get assigned, right? In other words, assign the stock. So that's a risk that we need to be aware of because if I get assigned that stock, that means that I have to put up the capital to buy that stock. And I might not want to do that, right? Um, we need to be aware of uh, extraneous events, uh, restructurings, capitalizations, mergers, tech over, spin-offs, announcements. Uh, some of these we don't know about. They could uh, happen out of the blue. But two that are very particular that I want to emphasize here is dividends, declarations, and earnings. And those things you definitely uh, can uh, find the information when those could be uh, being reported. And those will have an adverse effect on this trade. So be aware of that. And hopefully at the, sometime in the session, I want to give you a great example of that one. But because we have a limited amount of risk, we know where our risk is. I just don't want you to jump into the trade without doing your due diligence. All right. Expiration risk occurs on the day of expiration if the price of the stock is at or slightly in the money. It's right close to where we had that higher strike that we sold. So what a trader might happen is there's two scenarios. They might sell the stock in anticipation that they're going to get exercised, or they don't do anything and then they get assigned and 
um, they have to put that capital up to purchase that stock, right? But since assignment on expiration doesn't happen until after the market closes, you might take a buy that stock um, and now you have no way to get out or that option that you bought below the market that you used to protect or limit your risk, that has expired as well. So you would be long that stock and then come Monday morning, you know, that stock could fall even farther and you might be exposed to that risk. So one of the things that we can do or the best practice that we could do is if I'm at that scenario where the value of the stock is close to my strike, that I sold, the one that I created my credit, the best practice is probably just to close the whole trade out and uh, walk away the, walk away from the trade before uh, the end of expiration, okay? All right, so where are we at? Okay, so we're gonna go back to bar chart, our main page, we're in the options, and there's our advanced groove beam that we've uh, worked through, and here's the last one, bull put, credit spread so pull that up and so what it's done here it's given us a lot of uh, potential trades you notice it's given us 2075 potential different trades and uh, they'll rank them uh, on this page based on a maximum uh, profit that's how it's initially is ranked but we can do some things here to um lower those uh, uh those candidates but before we do that let, just across the top here uh you know here's our maximum profit uh, that's the amount of credit we take in minus uh, the debit we put out, right? You can see here this maximum profit here is $1.65, right? We're going to sell uh, our leg one for $2.75, and we're going to buy our leg two for $1.10. So $2.75 minus $1.10 gives us our $1.65. Uh, our maximum loss on this particular trade would be 35 cents. That would be the amount of money that we take in minus the spread differential. Um, our break even, that would be our break even price, right? Days to expiration, right? So one of the things I can do here is I can go in and I can go to the set the filters here. And we talked about we want to look for a shorter period of time. So let's just do that and change this from uh, less than 60 days, but we'll, let's change it right down to 30 days and let's see what that result is. Now it's going to probably knock it down, but probably not significantly. Let's see what it gives us. And, you know, 1500, still a lot of markets uh, to go through. Now, the other thing we can do is, um, we could look at monthlies or just weekly, especially if we're looking at those shorter time frames that would lower um, our uh, candidate as well. The other thing that we can do is let's say you know a stock that you like or you are very familiar with its characteristics. You can come in here under the underlying asset filter and select the symbol and you could type in the symbol of the stock there there it is apple and see if that stock comes up if you know there are some scenarios for you and again i've done apple and i'm still there's 196 different apple trades uh that we could uh, do so those are some ways that you can uh narrow down uh your candidates right so the other thing we can do is we can make a screener uh, for ourselves. And so let me go back here and get rid of Apple. And I've done that. I've created a bull put spread screener. And there are tutorials that shows you how to uh, create your own screener. And... So my screener has narrowed down that 2,000 down to 208. Still a lot for us to do. Um, again, I could probably go in here and tweak this 
a, a little bit. But let me just show you some of the elements that are in there and, and why I put those in there. So first, the two first ones is implied volatility, leg one, and historical volatility. So the purpose of this is the concept behind, behind credit spreads is that we want to sell um, high implied volatility environments, right? The the purpose here is we believe that higher volatility will create or relate to higher premium prices for those options, those puts that we're going to sell. So we want to have higher uh, volatility. Now, what we want to do is we want to see a comparison. Notice that there's no value in my 20-day historical. All I want to see is that my implied volatility for leg one is greater than my 20-day uh, historical, which just tells me that this stock is in a volatile cycle and that these puts premiums could be enriched or inflated. Notice I do pick the high level for the implied volatility uh, for leg number one, all right? So when I go back to look at my results, for instance, we have AAL, American Airlines, right? And then I'm gonna go under my filter view. That's my bull put spread view. Here we can see that our leg one volatility right now for American Airlines is 91, where our historical is 44. We know for a fact that the premiums that are being created in the market right now are greater than what we would normally see uh, during the last 20 days, okay? The next input that I'm going to look at is net delta, and this is the difference between our leg one and leg two. Now, you can play with this one as far as you're concerned, but um, many of my options uh, sessions that I've done, especially our credit and debit spreads ones, we talk about this golden number, this 25 uh, to 30, where I just find that when you can find your net delta in that 25 to 30, it's just that those trades seem to work out better than other ones. Some traders will say, hey, you know, I want to look at a much larger net, net delta. And you can do that. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that in my personal experience, I just find that that 25 is kind of like that magic number. But what I want you to be aware of is that just because you're going to go for a higher net delta does not mean it's going to translate in a greater um, uh, profitable trade. It might give you a dollar value more profitable, but maybe the amount of risk is too much. So let's just look at right on the top here. We have American Airlines and our first strike is $16. And our second strike is $10, $11, and $12. So we can see this is a $6 differential, a $5 differential, and a $4 differential, right? So here's my $4 differential, and I'm going to collect uh, $1.05. I'm going to take out another dollar worth of risk for a $5 differential, but I'm only picking up $0.07 cents of credit, or I'm going to pick put in two more dollars of uh risk and I'm only really picking up another 11 cents. So that's probably not enough reward to me in terms of credit based on the risk, the price risk that I'm taking on on those differentials. And notice that, that our delta is increasing, right? Because we're picking a leg, that second leg that's farther away. So it's not necessarily the delta, it's really the combination of the credit that we're going to get uh, versus the strike differential. And again, like I said, I just find that when you look at those um, ones that are right around 25 to 30, they just seem like those trades are the ones that work. So we do see a 30 here, and this one is $16 versus uh, $212.50. Uh, I'm risking uh, $3.50 in strike differential, but I'm taking in uh, almost a dollar worth of credit. So that's the next thing that I want to kind of talk to you guys about is this uh, net credit versus our strike differential. And again, if I go back into my set filters down here, what we want to try to achieve here is just, again, a general rule is 
we want to try to capture about a third of that strike differential. Now, some op trades will give us that opportunity, but most will be just a little short of that third. So, you know, I've set my filter here where I have a strike differential of $3 or greater, and I want to make sure that my net credit is close to that one third, so that one to three ratio. And so I have 80 cents. Uh, if I can get better than that, then that trade um, will reward me more. Now, probably what will happen is in order for me to get a greater ratio, that one to three ratio, I'm probably going to have to set my higher strike closer to current price. And we'll see that as we look through some examples. Um, the other thing that we can do in deciding where we're going to set uh, or do our filters here is, again, this moneyness of our leg one. How far is our first strike away from current price? Remember, we said if we wanted to be conservative, we're going to look at, at the money uh, to out of the money. Um, but here what I've done is I picked at the money, which is about 5% below current price and 5% uh, above a current price. So it's in that little range, right around where current price. If I wanted to just be below current price, I would go from zero to minus five or minus five to minus 25 to be out of the money. So what we're going to do is we're filtering based on right at current price or within 5% either way. All right. Okay. So the other thing that you know I want to do on on this type of trade is you know I still want to look at my stock. I still want to look at it, it the price movement. So one of the things that we can do here is I do have 280 different uh, scenarios, but you can see a lot of them are related to just one stock. I can click on my flip chart. Wake up, flip chart. And notice of those 280 uh, trade opportunities that my filter has created, it's really only these five particular stocks. So again, I would look at um, uh, the structure, the trade, to see if I like uh, a certain combination of strikes. Now, American Airlines, um, is this in an uptrend? Uh, I think the uptrend is probably uh, still intact but it looks like it's kind of been range bound in recent weeks. But certainly we do see a support of price about $15 and below $15, uh, again, another area of support. So if I could find a combination of puts where I'm using the 15 and $14 strikes, that might be a trade that works for me. So let's just go back and look at our American Airlines and, um, Look at my strike differentials. And let me load this by alphabet. So we kind of want to look for that 15, 14, and I don't see that uh, here today. So, you know, that's part of trading. But let's look at uh, maybe Apple will give us an opportunity to look. Apple is definitely one of those stocks that has been doing pretty well, right? Nice uptrend here, right? So again, on the Apple here, I think, you know, we could talk about, you know, the 140, 135 as our higher strike. And then below that, you know, maybe around, what's this, 126, so maybe a 128, 129, or maybe even a 125. So maybe, and for in the case of Apple, you know, I'd look at the 135, 125 strike combination. Let's see what we got. We have a 135 in here. We got a 136, 136, 124, 136, 125. Um, again, trading, modern day trading, right? So uh, let's see, 120, 140, 126, right, in this area. So we could look for. Here we go. 
There's a 136, 124, a little bit different, but about right around the same area. $12 worth of uh, price differential. And how much am I going to take in? I'm going to take in $3.46. Well, my strike differential is $12. If I want to try to get about a third, that'd be $4. You know, I'm getting close to that. I'm getting close to about, you know, 80, 80% 80 of that. And that would probably be a trade uh, that would work for me. All right. So that's oh, some ways we can tweak uh, the screener to look for uh, some trading opportunities based on uh, deltas, based on uh, strike differentials. Um, but also, let me give you some um, other uh, ways that you guys can um, uh, look for some cool, uh, cool trades. So let me show you how to do that. All right. So one of the cool new features that we have um, in our options uh, arsenal is something called implied volatility ranking and percentage. Let me click on that page. And again, here is where we're talking about that inflated uh, volatility. So, you know, just go to this page and you will see this will be categorized by stocks that have high volatilities, either their implied volatilities or their ranking or in their percentage. So you can start right here. And now the other thing I love about this page is it also shows you volume. So, you know, again, unusual volume activity. And you can see the top three that are very active today, Nokia, Apple, and AMC. Now, a couple of these are uh, it have been in the news in this uh, Robin Hood scenario, but Apple certainly is one of those one of those stocks that is uh, actively trading. But Nokia, let's look at Nokia. It is um, implied volatility is super high. Uh, its ranking is super high. So we that would be one of the stocks that I would I would be saying, hey, the options that are trading on this particular stock are inflated. So that could give me an opportunity uh, to look for a trade. So I'll go back to my screener. All right, bull put credit screener. But now I have a target. I know what I want to look for. I want to look at uh, Nokia. So I'll go back in here. Go to my underlying asset. Buy symbol. I'm going to add it. And I know the symbol, right? And OK, right? I'm going to change my time inside of 30 days. And I'm going to look for those results. And so now I've, I've really defined this. I really tied this in here. Now it's given me a couple different combinations here. $7 uh, first leg strike versus $5, uh, $4, $3.75. You know, how much? of that range of price that two dollars or two and a quarter or three dollars and how much premium am i going to take in now again i'm going to go to my chart and do that analysis right and you know again that would be that more aggressive style now this morning when i was looking at uh nokia uh in this terms of this trade the five and four dollar strike combination was giving us a nice um I think it was about a third of that price relationship, so it was working out really nice. Again, here we're here's one of those stocks that has this big momentum. We don't know if this momentum is going to continue today or over the next few days, but this is a really cool way to find those high volatility markets and look for those trading opportunities. Okay. All right. The other thing that we can do is we can come into unusual options activity. And again, more action in a combination of strikes could mean inflated prices, right? So not only can we do stocks, but we can also do um, ETFs. So I've just clicked on unusual ETFs. Right, and that's what this page here is, right? And the other thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna screen on this unusual ETF action. And 
make sure you are on the ETFs. But I'm just going to look at puts, right? Because that's what our strategy is based on. It's based on puts, right? And I'll look at that result. And there's a lot of different ETFs that you might be familiar with. And the one that kind of stands out to me that has been in the news is uh, this one here is the Russell, the ETF for the Russell. And this, you know, the Russell has been one of those um, indexes that has kind of been leading the market over the last a uh, few weeks, right? Our chart here, you can see it's kind of been in, in an uptrend. Now the market is down a little bit today, but let's go and see if there's any unusual put activity uh, in the Russell. So as I go down uh, through the Russell put activity, I can see where we can find a lot of greater volumes. Now remember, our strategy says that we're gonna be close to current price. And so when we look at this column here, which let me scroll it up a little bit so you can see what it says, that's our moneyness. That's how far away we are from current price. We said we would kind of want to stay in that, you know, that 5%. So if I go down here, I do see the 201 put is just outside of 5%. The 189, you know, again, just a little bit outside of 5%. Um, that has some unusual, a lot of price action a lot you know double the open interest in terms of volume here at 12,000 the 201s right so that kind of gives me an idea of where I want to start looking to set my higher strike so I'm going to look to look at um, the Russell and I'm going to say hey these puts are inflated so that would be the strike that I would sell and then I want to look for uh, a strike below to cover my risk again I want to make sure uh, that it looks good on the picture. Now, the other thing that I will do is not only the moneyness, but also I'll take a look and see when the expiration is. So the February 19th are monthlies. Um, this one here is a weekly. So when I go to back to my screener, my put credit screener, I'm going to have to make those adjustments based on that active put activity. So I'll come back to my screener right? Um, I'm not trading a stock. I'm going to be trading an ETF, right? So I'll change that to ETF, right? Uh, we said that we were looking at weeklies. There was some of those were weeklies. Uh, again, we're going to be inside of 30 days, right? And let's make sure. Oh, I know. I got to make one more change, right? We looked at those puts that were just outside of 5%. So let's go out of the money, but let's not go too far out of the money. But let's see what happens on uh, this trade. Again, um, we want to be symbol specific. And IWM. And let's see what happens. All right. I mean, a lot of trades here, but we know where to focus our strike combinations. We want to look around that $2, $2 and one, right? And I can scroll this down. Now we're still pretty high in our strikes. We're still up around 214, 213. So I might go in a couple pages. Right, and scroll them down. Looks like I'm gonna have to go a little bit more, a lot more trades. When you set these things up in the morning, you know, you get a lot less opportunities in the later in the afternoons. All right, I'm looking for those strike combinations again. I apologize that we're not getting there fast enough. Maybe I'll just, oh, here we go. All right. So where do we want to start looking? Well, we said we wanted to kind of look around that two, uh, $200 mark, right? Or um, that 180, $198, $200, right? So here we have a 200 190 uh, strike differential where that's a $10 risk. 
in price differential, but it looks like our premium that our credit we're going to take in is only two dollars. Maybe we want to try to get a little bit more out of that. Now, what I could do is I can come back into my chart and uh, look at my chart and see if I can make some adjustments um, ter in terms of my strike combinations. And here's that two dollar, two hundred dollar versus the one ninety. So again, where we want to try to find those areas of support based on chart analysis. But here we do see that the 205, maybe 200 combination might be a better combination for us in terms of our trend here, because if price fell below 200, it probably was going to go all the way down to you know that 190. But if we believe this trend is intact, that 205, 200 uh, strike combination might be the better example for us uh, to look for. All right. And let's see what happens with that one. Let's see. Here's a 205, 203, 205, 203, 205, 93. Let's see. 205, 92, 205, 202. So we're getting there. 205, 201. Uh, one more, please. Is it there? It's not there. So it's it's probably on this page somewhere. So here's a 205190, probably not enough uh, for us. But it is uh, a way where we can look for some trading opportunities based on um, unusual uh, put uh, activity. So the last way that we can use the combination of this um, options strategy is I'm going to go back to my original screener. And remember we said that this trade is designed by looking for tr stocks that are in an uptrend or that we believe are in an uptrend. So one of the cool things that we can do is we can come back into our setter filters, right? Now, what we're going to do, again, we're going to change our time. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to screen now on a list, a very particular list. And I'm going to open that up. And these are some of our more popular bar chart pages. Some of these are proprietary. And here's one of them that is called Trading Signals. So I'll click on that. And I'm going to add that to my screener. And, you know, we have our top stocks to own or ones that are, have signal upgrades um, but let's click on these two the top one percent signal strength and top one percent uh, signal direction now signal strength means that we're looking at a stock who has of our 13 proprietary excuse me our 13 technical analysis that we uh, employ in our signal strength uh, system that all of them are um, showing an uptrend direction uh, the, over a longer period of time. Direction, again, all 13 are showing an uptrend in a shorter period of time. So strength is more of a longer period and uh, direction is a shorter period. But the, what, the top 1% selling is that all 13 are showing a buy signal or an uptrend. So what we know that is if we click on these two uh, filters, it's going to only show us stocks where price is uh, really uh, going up. And let's see what we get. Right. And so, again, we have uh, a multiple of markets. Now, one of the things I would kind of recommend to do on this one so you can do your analysis is, you know, just click on the symbol and it's going to um, – categorize them in alphabetic order. So you can look at uh, all the different markets that are out there, okay? All right, so here we can see like, for instance, Tesla uh, is, you know, one of those, definitely one of those momentum stocks. We know that Tesla has been in an uptrend. And now just to reinforce what we were talking about, how I can make sure is I can check my uh, flip charts and go through a lot of these uh, different stocks, right? Uh, you know, again, th some of these stocks that might be, uh, have some greater momentum, 
as I work through them, right? So, you know, you might pick one of these ones out that you believe uh, has a really strong uptrend. And you can see all of these do have strong up uh, up trends, right? Um, but let's look at Tesla, right? So what could we do with Tesla here? Well, you know, again, Tesla is an $800 stock. I don't know who would feel comfortable buying an $800 stock, or maybe you don't have enough capital. But if you believe that Tesla is in uh, this momentum is continuing on, well, let's look at, you know, our price combinations here. It looks like, you know, back above 850 uh, is kind of in tune with our trend. And, um, you know, maybe 800 would be our lower strike where if price fell below 800, you know, maybe this trend would uh, be over. So I'm going to look at maybe some 850s, uh, 800 strike differentials and see what we can find. Let's see what Tesla gives us today. And here we go. 850, 800, right? So what is that? Well, that's a $50 strike differential. What did we say? We want to try to capture about a third, right, of that. So a third of 50 is what? $17. But what do we get? We get $23. So here we see that the put combination gives us an inflated uh, value which means that this trade has more profit potential in it, as long as uh, Tesla uh, over the next few weeks about three weeks uh, stays above eight hundred and fifty dollars um, where's our break even? Well, our break even is 826.80. Again, I could go back to my chart. Look at Tesla in terms of that break even and see if I can find some structure. What do we say? 826. And sure enough, you know, 826 is kind of right in this area between this this low here and that low there. So my break even is actually in an area of support as well. So um, this is a really cool way to find these trading opportunities based on this strategy where we wanna look for uptrending uh, markets. Um, you still need to do uh, your um, work, you still need to do your diligence, um, but uh, hopefully you guys, um, this session helps you out with um, a better understanding of what we're going to try to look for and what we're trying to achieve when we do um, these markets. Now, I did want to talk about that caveat of uh, markets where, you know, we got to be careful with earnings, right? Um, and So let me just show you this. Uh, this is uh, IBM. And just last week, uh, their earnings came out. And this is why you need to be aware of earnings, because here would have been one of those, definitely one of those stocks that has nice upward momentum. And then look what happened after the earnings came out, right? It, 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 it fell away. So, you know, you, you know, probably the trade w most likely would have been stopped out. In other words, that second leg would have, come into play but you know you might have had set you know a 125 120 uh strike combination and you would have been stopped out on this one so it's, it's important for you to when you set up these trades even though your market looks strong or you have a nice momentum just make sure you do your due diligence make sure you don't have a dividend announcement um or uh you have an earnings announcement in the next you know few weeks uh before the this uh option comes to expiration Okay, so uh, we're right around uh, 50 minutes here. Um, so I know, Gene, normally we talk about what we're going to do uh, next week. And if I go to uh, free webinars, uh, I notice that we're talking about Bar Charts Dashboard. And I think, Gene, you're going to take the captain's chair next week, right?
I sure am, and I can't wait. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've actually run one of these webinars. Uh, not not dissing you at all, John, but I'm kind of looking forward to this one. Yeah, for next week's session, uh, I am going to go through more of a you know a how-to session on how to use our dashboard. Dashboard is a one-page do everything kind of application that you can run and you'll see there's a dashboard link at the very top just to the left of the tools menu i'm going to be focusing the entire webinar on dashboard i'm going to show you lots of tips and tricks on how to look at these big full-size charts uh, how to get additional data how to look at your watch lists and portfolios using my charts you're going to see lots of things that maybe you've never realized Dashboard can do. And really, that's the focus of next week's session is to really give you a, uh, a good feel, good idea for how you can start using Dashboard in your day-to-day -day trading. So cool. If, I'm, yeah, I'm looking so, forward to seeing that, Gene. Well, uh, thanks, John. Um, there's one other thing I just, I just want to throw out for today's session. If you've asked a question specific about today's session about the bull put credit spread and uh, we haven't sufficiently answered that, I suggest that you email support at barchart.com. Our support group uh, is very knowledgeable about options and they'll be able to answer any questions that you may have that John didn't uh, get to in today's session. Okay, great. And then, you know, just to give you guys a little heads up after Gene's um, uh, one that next month we've got a lot of exciting stuff that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to look at that strength and direction. We're going to talk about small accounts and futures. And uh, we're going to come back and, again, look at unusual options activities. So we got a lot of cool stuff uh, lined up for you folks. I uh, hope you keep coming back to our sessions and remind you that you can sign up and try some of these premium services for a free 30-day uh, trial process. So uh, until, well, next week with Gene, but in two weeks with me, I want to wish everyone the best of health and the good of all trading. Thank you again, everybody, and thank you for visiting barchart.com. <laughs>